And I know all of you are aware of how that fun that is. So, um, but she is here. It's in the back cover. If anybody needs a membership form, we have membership forms. Can we just alter one slide? So uh, there's lots of food. If everybody wants to get food, whatever, it's fine. Very middle before. So we want to uh, welcome you all to the uh, our second meeting of the quarter. It's the seventh week, which is crazy. I hope all your quarters are going well. Ours are fastly. Crassing, it's crazy. Um, but uh, we wanted to just go over a couple things of what's been going on. So National Nutrition Month is coming. Um, Two weeks. And uh, our big event is on Monday, March 5th from 10 to 4. And they still need people to help with, um, with uh, the day of the event is a big deal. Um, I know if you're in 479, that class is canceled that day, so you are required to come to National Nutrition Month. You can get 418 hours for National Nutrition Month. It's a great event. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're having booths, um, all different ethnicities. Um, we're having Indian, vegetarian, Mexican, Asian, American, physical fitness, beauty, anti-aging booths. So we're going to have food, we're going to have products. Um, and if you're interested in getting involved, they would love to hear from you. Um, either Gilda or Andrea, worst case scenario, you can always email us if you don't copy their names down. Uh, but uh, and there's also, we need help with flyers and banners and decorations. There's everything you can do if you can spare an hour, if you can spare a minute. It's a great event, it's a lot of fun. And then this Thursday, they're having a planning meeting, so if you don't want to necessarily contact them right now, you can just show up this Thursday at 3.30 on the first floor of the Student Union and just kind of talk with them one-on-one -on -one and see if there's an area of interest or if there's like specific things that you can get involved with. So that's another option. Um, we still have community outreach going on. I don't think Laura's She's not here. here. Um, but they've partnered up with Vela, which is Volunteers of East Los Angeles. And basically they've given us free range in terms of like how we want to get involved with their community and their uh, organization. So they have like a kitchen on site where you could do like cooking classes or cooking lessons. Um, if there's like a specific type of project you're really passionate about doing, they're more than willing to listen and make it happen. So they're really there as a resource for us. So again, if you need those hours or if there's just something that you want to do to approve upon like your resume, this is the avenue to go towards. And I would contact Laura for more information. Their kitchen's not going to be done until the end of March. So if you're taking 14 next quarter, you, you'll get hours for next quarter, not this quarter. Um, but you do get hours for this meeting, too. So, you know, make sure you sign up for it. But um, yeah, so they have this amazing uh, experimental kitchen where we're going to be doing classes with kids and, and adults. And so there's a lot of great opportunities there. And if you, if you also bilingual, that's really beneficial uh, as well. Um, and uh, that's that's going to be an ongoing thing. So if you want to get involved with that, contact Lauda, or you can always contact us. Um, our big spring event is a meet and greet with RDs, and what we're doing is we're going to have a, at least 15 RDs and also some public health professionals coming. Uh, we're doing it in the ballroom. It's going to be during uh, 11 to 1 on April 18th, which is a Wednesday. And uh, what that is, is is that if you're a member, you can come for free. And you can, uh, you'll be introduced to the 15 plus RDs, uh, public health people, and then you'll have an opportunity to sit and talk to them. And they're going to be people from all different areas. So they'll be anywhere from research to sports, nutrition, to uh, obesity, food science, food science. There's going to be uh, there's going to be RDs from all different areas, public health, anything, uh, you know, anorexia, eating disorder people, uh, and also other. Um, uh, public health officials if people that don't become RDs but they get into other areas of the field. And you'll have an opportunity to talk to them and meet with them and there'll also be food because everybody loves food. So um, it's going to be a great event. If you're not a member you have to pay five dollars but it's going to be an awesome event. So um, we are having a planning meeting this time next week uh, because invitations for all the, uh, the people to attend RDs is going to go out March 1st. So we need a lot of help with doing flyers and um, doing gifts and we want to do, you know, we want to do some centerpieces and some decorations and make it a really nice event. It's something where, you know, you, know, you look like presentable and, you know, it's something nicer than sweatpants and a SDA t-shirt. So. 
uh, which is my favorite outfit. But um, so that's great. And then the other event is the end of year banquet, which is going to be in May, which is also crazy. And that's basically an opportunity for us to um, celebrate all the people that have done great stuff with us. And um, once again, that's going to there's going to be food. It'll be probably on a morning at the restaurant um, by the union. So if you're interested in helping out with that, it's another great event. So you can contact me or you can contact the Cal State LA and just let us know if you're interested. All right, so we upcoming spring events. We have an LA food drive, which is on April 28th at 1030? 1030? 10 to 1. 10 to 1. So if you're interested in signing up for that, um, Rebecca is the contact for that. I know it's a little early, but some of you guys like to plan that far ahead. So that's our next food drive. It's at the same Whole Foods in Pasadena. And then we have our farm box going on. Crystal, your sign language? Oh. What? No, 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 not for you, it's for Rebecca. Oh, for Rebecca, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have our farm box. Hopefully it's going to start in the spring. And it we will actually, start in the spring. It will start in the spring, but we need two more people to sign up for in order for it to happen. And there was just a, a shout. It was on the Cal State LA website. Yes, and I actually uh, said it. It's going to be on the website. Uh, there's an article. It's called, um, it's on the website. And I also emailed out to all the members because I'm very excited about it. Um, the publicist for Cal State LA did an article about our farm box. I don't know if you're all familiar with farm box. It's organic produce delivered to campus. So we get our produce from, uh, from a, a, a grower, an organic grower, comes to campus, we separate it into small bags, and then everybody gets a subscription. You, you pay for the whole quarter, and then you get deliveries twice a month. Um, and you don't know what you're going to get, but it's all organic, and it's all green, and, and it also comes with recipes and information about, like, what do I want to do with Oprah? You know, like that kind of stuff. So, um, <laughs> but it's really great. It's a really big initiative to get people eating more greens on campus because, as you all know, there's not a lot of greens on campus. So we're trying to change that. Um, and it's also a fundraiser for for SDA. Not huge, but it is a fundraiser. But it's really about changing the the makeup of the food on campus. That's really the big thing. So the more support we have, the better. So we have 30 subscriptions. We need two more to get it going. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it last quarter because we didn't have enough. So hopefully. If you're interested, please email Kayla, or once again, email us. Yay. It's okay. It's uh, totally fine. Our speaker's here. <laughs> and, um, and it would be great to uh, get involved with that. And also, she needs people to help her with it, so it's another great opportunity to get involved uh, with delivery. And, and she's been very active with the dean of the health school, because the, the dean is very, very, very excited about the program, because they want to improve the wellness of the students at Cal State Bill. It's a big initiative coming up. Yes. How much is it? It's sixty dollars for the whole quarter. So that's three months. So that's two, four, six, six deliveries. Six deliveries. Yeah. You know, it's organic. It's a fundraiser. It's, you know, you can share it with people. You know. And for any. And we're all subscribers, so. Of and uh, for anybody that have ever gone to CSA box, it, usually it's like 20 pounds of produce. So we're getting these big boxes and breaking them down into much smaller portions, so it's a lot more manageable and you're not overwhelmed with like 20 pounds of produce. So that's why it's also a lot less expensive. So. And our Miss January is a bay. It is blurry. Yay. It's not your eyes. <laughs> Yay. It is blurry. It's not your eyes. Sorry. No problem. Thank you for being such a wonderful support. Abea has pretty much headed the food committee with Jennifer and really stepped it up and been an awesome member, not just this year, but last year. So. And also she made all the hummus, which is really <laughs> So that's really what it's for. So we want to thank you for being such a wonderful participant. Great volunteer. Thank you. Thanks, Abea. <laughs> okay, so our last thing is just get involved. We have membership forms. It's $15. Uh, you can buy a t-shirt, we have that kind, and we have this kind, all different sizes. Do you have that kind today? Yeah, you can, buy, you can buy them all. We don't have sweatshirts because we got to sell t-shirts. <laughs> um, uh, what else? Email us if you have any interest, if you have any ideas, any, you know, anything. And um, that's our... Uh, that's our email address, that's our website. Our website is full with information. If you have, like for instance, those brownies. Those brownies are amazing. She, Renata, Renata had to leave, but they were made with black beans and avocado. What? Yeah. Right. Okay. And those are like they like fudge, right? So she last meeting she made an uh, an oatmeal cookie that oh, was yeah. to die for, and we put the recipe on the website. So people share recipes with us. They share experiences. We went to see a sports nutritionist, Nancy Clark, speak. There's information about that experience. 
all kinds of stuff on there. Mentorship, anything you want to do, just check out the website. And if you have any questions, please email us. Anybody have a question? Thoughts, <laughs> concerns? <laughs> if we if, if we could buy get sweatshirts and get a very minimal amount, but you, you know, because if people want hats, clean canteens. <laughs> um, Please stand up and say your name. Hi, I'm Jen. <laughs> and what role do you have in SDA, Jen? What? What role do you have in SDA? I'm the bulletin board committee chair. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I don't know what the bulletin board looked like for a while. We're still you know, accepting members for the committee. Yeah. We're going to yeah. do it. Um, for the meet and RD, yes. doesn't that conflict with MNT? Yes, it does. Okay. It does, but it's only 11 to 1, and class starts at noon. So you can go for the first hour. You can go for the first hour. Yeah, I, or we're, we're gonna, gonna talk to her about it, but okay. it, I don't. It's not gonna be a problem. Okay, I'm not worried. <laughs> the check goes on our. Team. But thank you for being aware. I yes. appreciate that. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay. So next, very exciting! Yay! So our, our speaker is here. Her name is Bridget Harvey Elliott, and she has a huge. Uh, <laughs> resume and clarification uh, qualifications. Can you help? This is Bridget. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I, I do wholeheartedly apologize for being late. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we all know what parking's like here. It's a nightmare. <laughs> and the ten freeway. We know that too. <laughs> um, hi, Michelle. Yes. Oh, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> so um, Bridget has a bachelor's degree in biology from UCLA. She's a master's degree in nutrition from Cal State Northridge. She's the association administrator for the California Dietetics Association. She's a nutrition instructor for two community colleges. She's the vice president of customer support was. services. Was. Okay, was. <laughs> 23 years. Uh, she is um, involved with the Maryland Magarum Center for Food Science, Nutrition, and Dietary Advisory Board at Cal State Northridge for 15 years. And she served as the co-chair and moderator for the annual Nutrition College Bowl. Please welcome Bridget Harvey Elliott. Yeah. Sure. Can you, can you yeah. I'd love to. I come bearing gifts. Yay. Love gifts. Yay. Okay, one sheet I really want everybody to take is the principal sheet. And then I guess on your way out, I have a box of California Dietetic Association pencils. <laughs> yeah. We don't even get pens here. Wow. I know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 And I also have tablets of paper. Not big enough to take notes on, but I'll put these up here too. You can grab those if you want some. And I have my business card, which I will pass back. Um, start with this one. Uh, uh, CSULA, 2000. Actually, Monica, can you um, can you do it? I need to handle this. I, I can do it. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay, it's that one. <laughs> Monica, can you? Can you get out of the way? 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 Can you get out of the it's always good to come here and speak. I usually come to the CUP program students. I'll turn my phone off. I usually come and I speak about what is the California Dietetic Association. But today I was asked to speak on something a little bit different, which is ethics. Ethics. Ethics are very important in the profession of dietetics. Has everybody got the sheet? <laughs> Very important in the field of dietetics, especially at this point in time, because everything related to food, nutrition, health, 
quackery, supplements, everything <laughs> changes so very often. So is everyone here doing mean, something related to food, nutrition, dietetics, food science? Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with the constantly changing field of dietetics. So look in the upper right hand corner. As of September, the old American Dietetic Association became the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. For those of you that plan to go on and become registered dietitians, this is your national organization. The California Dietetic Association, which I am the administrator of, is the California affiliate for the national office. So what we manage here in California are all of the registered dietitians who are members, diet technician registered who are members, and any students who are members. You can join the academy as a student. When you join the academy as a student and you are in California, you automatically are a member of the California Dietetic Association. So, I'm not going to ask you who all is a member and who all isn't, but if you were a member, you would have gotten a newsletter that talked about many ways you could have gotten some money from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the California Dietetic Association. I got something about that today. Okay, everybody's got their code of ethics sheet. I first just want to read the preamble. A lot of people wonder why do dietitians, nutrition people, those involved in dispensing nutrition information, why do they need a code of ethics? I'm old, I have to put on my reading glasses to see. My arms are not long enough to hold it out far. Okay, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, I'm reading the preamble section. And its credentialing agency, the Commission on Dietetic Registration, believe it is in the best interest of the profession and the public. Keep that in the back of your brain. I'll get to the public in a little bit. And the public it serves to have a code of ethics in place that provides guidance to dietetic practitioners in their professional practice and conduct. What does the word conduct mean? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I ask a question. You shout out an answer. No grading here, just shout it out. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. So conduct. As far as dietitians are concerned, you're like, well, okay, if I want to go dance on the table, that's my business. It has nothing to do with the information I dispense. But your conduct in this arena is the information that you provide other professionals and the public. Dietetics practitioners have voluntarily adopted this code of ethics to replace the values and ethical principles guiding the dietetic profession and to set forth commitments and obligations of the dietetic practitioner to the public, their clients, the profession, their colleagues, and other professionals. As registered dietitians, and soon to be dietitians, we are, we would like to think, the nutrition experts, although there are quite a few of others out there who feel that they know more than we do about nutrition, dietetics, foods, etc. So the code of ethics for the profession of dietetics, it was developed by the now, I'm going to say from time to time, I'm going to say the American Dietetic Association because I've said this almost 30 years. By the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. This was published in 2009, and they have recently put out um, an entire toolkit on ethics. We're going to go through just a tiny part of it, um, and then we're going to have some case studies at the end, which will help you understand some of the dilemmas that you're going to encounter. And then you're going to think to yourself, how is it that you would handle that particular situation? Now, I can talk real fast. If I get going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Okay, ethics is a struggle between right and wrong, moral and moral, just and unjust. So, right and wrong, they're two, at two completely different ends of the spectrum, and there can be stuff in the middle. It is that middle ground where people tend to have very, a very hard time making judgments. Moral and moral, just and unjust. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Ethics, the study of standards of conduct and moral judgment, uh, number two, blah, blah, blah. Number three. The rules or standards governing the conduct of a person or members of a profession. So under the definition of ethics, we're going to look at primarily number three, the rules and standards governing the conduct of a person or the members of a profession. Code of ethics is a set of rules for practitioners' behavior. It's a statement of behavioral norms. It can help build a public trust in the activities of the profession. 
Last one, it can help build a public trust. If you're continually providing accurate information that tends to assist people, they then will trust you. If you give them information one day, and then you go back and you change information the next day, or the next time you see that particular client, they're going to start wondering, do you actually know what you're talking about? But in the case of politics, it doesn't matter. <laughs> change your mind as much as you want to. <laughs> now, different types of codes. Thank you. Different types of codes. There are aspirational codes, uh, educational codes, regulatory codes. Aspirational codes. I'm walking away right now. Aspirational codes are those like, say, where physicians take the Hippocratic Oath. What is the Hippocratic Oath? Do no harm. Do no harm. I will do my best for my patients. I will try to make them well. Hippocratic Oath came from who? Hippocrates. Hippocrates who was who? Smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, unquote, the first physician, one of the Greek first physicians. So that's the Hippocratic Oath. And physicians these days still take that Hippocratic Oath. There's all different kinds of them. They still take it. Educational. Give me an educational code of conduct. Don't cheat. That, that's it. <laughs> you can say, you can have a student honor code, you can have an honor code of conduct. Basically, don't cheat. Who gets hurt when you cheat? And who else? Everyone else around you. Everyone else around you. Somebody's going to cheat. Well, I don't want to say anything. That's one of our case studies. <laughs> Regulatory. Regulatory is what we're going to deal with, what the profession of dietetics deal with. What are the regulations related to the code of ethics? Now, this is where you need to look at your sheet. I didn't want to have you memorize this. The code of ethics consists of five categories. You look at your sheet, the bold parts, fundamental principles, responsibilities to the public, responsibilities to the clients, responsibilities to the profession, and responsibilities to colleagues and other professions. Now, there are 19 principles that fall under these five main categories. Responsibilities to the public. The practitioner considers the health, safety, and welfare of the public at all times. That means whatever it is you think you want to say to someone, you really should make sure that you know exactly what you're talking about which in these day and age can be really hard because one scientific study will come out one day, three months later you'll have another one refuting that one, six months later you'll have another one refuting them both and coming out with something completely different. So in the profession of dietetics, what we like to say is what you're saying, is it evidence-based, is it science-based? There's a lot of information out there that's great to want to jump on the bandwagon and tell your family and friends and everybody you know, yes, this is what you need to do but you need to say, well, today, because that may change. But scientific-based, anything that you say, if it's science-based, you have some science to back you up. If it's because you read it on Google, <laughs> I, I know lots of people that will de debate based on what they read on Google. I said, so what is this, the Google? I said, who is that? Do you know this person, the Google person? <laughs> Anyway, the functions of the Code of Ethics is to protect the profession and the credential. If you have people dispensing lots of inaccurate information, your profession will then take a black eye. Your profession will be degraded by members who are dispensing inaccurate information. The code, uh, the code is intended to influence the public and private policy. Now, just now I'm going to ask you for a show of hands. How many of you have heard of the California Dietetic Association Public Policy Education Day? Who's heard of that? We got a couple. Okay, I'll get to that in just a minute. It's to improve professional practice. If your professionals are always dispensing accurate information that people can use, useful accurate information, then basically the way people perceive you and your profession is going to be in a positive manner. Uh, the Code of Ethics is intended to educate dietetic practitioners about ethical decision making and to meet the guidelines for accrediting agency for the Commission on Dietetic Registration. Briefly, um, when you go sit for the dietitian exam, the RD exam, it's exam, it's monitored by the, the Commission on Dietetic Registration. Okay, does everybody, have, have you heard of that? Okay. Commission on Dietetic Registration, they monitor, they credential, they certify registered dietitians. If you want to get advanced practice, they also have the exams and certify that. Once you become a registered dietitian or a dietetic technician registered, every five